Well, thank you, everyone. It's nice to see you. I think it's the first time I come back after COVID to these kind of conferences. So I'm very happy to take a flight again and come here. After that, I got a baby and everything. So I'm very excited to be here and not listen my baby crying the whole day. This is fantastic. So driving sustainability reporting, exploring the synergy of generative AI and XBRL. Okay, I, I hope this title your attention. This is the place I have been playing with the last year, apart from my baby as well. Okay. Um, basically, I wanted to basically share with you, you know, I come from the XBRL. 20 years ago, I was 17, I started building taxonomy and all this stuff because to me, XBRL was this magnificent technology that helped to actually describe the data in a wonderful way that at the end, we need to use the data to do analytics, to help the people to understand better uh, what is the information there, to help the people to get uh, to take actions and decisions. Okay, that's always has been my view. XBR has an important role to play, but always there are technologies that needs to be combined with XBR to get the full potential that we always promise. No, with XBR, we want to do comparable data. Fantastic. But you need to show how comparable data can look like, right? Okay, that, that's the point. So, like around six, seven years ago, I started to go inside AI with my PhD and, and so on. And, and, and I found very interesting to combine both worlds. The standardization world, the digital technology, and also AI. I remember in Singapore, I think it was, no, in, in China, the last one I went, we were talking about uh, explainable AI. Okay, how important is uh, to, I think we put a case of, we were capable to calculate a financial health score utilizing um, the Spanish Exchange Commission data and predict scores about the, the financial health and in addition showing the explanations behind because uh, somehow AI is there but nobody wants to use it because it's a black box. Unexplainable AI was fantastic by then to show, you know, you can uh, overcome that problem actually with this kind of technologies. Surprisingly, then there is the EU Act uh, regulation or AI telling you that, you know, everyone knows that at the end of the day, AI is there. You are going to use it. AIOPA has also a guideline on that regard. A EBA has also a guideline on that regard. And they say, if you want to use AI, which you are going to do at the end of the day, sooner or later, the information should, the, the, the algorithm should be easily to audit and, ex, and easy to explain. So that kind of trustworthy AI family, it makes completely sense. Okay. That was in China, I think it was five years ago. And over this time, I started to see that the market is starting going there and the regulation even in Europe is pushing on that direction to be honest with you. Uh, today, I wanted to do something different with this thing of generative AI, which I started to work with like a year and a half ago. And I felt quite interested, whether it's a friend or an enemy, you will make a choice today. Uh, I wanted to show you my experience because I think the best way to know a technology is to play with it. I have this sentence which says, learning by suffering. So this, you don't suffer the problem. You don't really understand what is behind. So I wanted to show with you my, expert, my, my experience, okay? With examples, because this is the way I, I always like to, to show things. And I wanted to say something about continual learning. Uh, I found quite uh, an interesting, and it's something that our clients is asking us, although they don't say in that way, okay? Uh, I can see the demand of the market in AI is coming to have these auto-learning uh, models. So they don't want to depend on the people to retrain the model. They want models of AI uh, products that are capable to actually learn for new trends, new behaviors. And I think this is going to be a very interesting area of research in the coming years. And it's going to have a lot of uh, area of expertise. I don't have examples yet. We are building one. 
So for the next one, the third season, I think we can explain when sustainability reporting. Okay, uh, I wanted to contextualize within here. This is, as I can see, sustainability reporting, okay? I know you have been, you have been uh, listening to uh, FRAG, ISSB, so this is a fantastic forum, and so on. Um, as far as I can see with my analytical glasses, is all this information is coming, fantastic. Now we will have standards, fantastic. All these standards will come in XBRL, fantastic. We didn't have this before, so fantastic. We have been. However, as far as I can see, the majority of the information will still be narrative. It's not bad. It's still a structure. It's still an XBRL. But obviously, from the analytical point of view, there will be a lot of needs actually to be capable to make analysis in narrative disclosure. Okay, This is what I envision in the next two or three years. Meaning that they will, it, it will be very interesting to have in the market tools that allows to extract the value of all these kinds of information. I mean, this is not new. I mean, if the case you have said about the auditor's report, the key audit matters, is a quite clear example. It's information that brings much more value about the auditor's opinion, right? But there is a complication here. It's not a structure. It follows guidelines. It doesn't follow uh, a specific uh, framework. Um, but there is a lot of value then if we are capable to extract the data um, and categorize and even incorporate it in, in prediction models. We, we did some exercise on that regard, actually. Uh, it was quite fun. Um, anyway, but the same way of thinking, I see this is coming back in a big, much more, in a much more detail in the coming sustainability information, sustainability reports within the management report in the EU, and let's see, in the others with the ISSB. Okay? Validations, I think there was an assurance uh, uh, slot here, which I know what they, but, but validation is super main. So I hope uh, there will be some clarity on that regard sooner than later. But I think we should not be disconnected. I think this is my message. Uh, analytics, uh, be capable to audit and be capable to validate. It should be in the same way of thinking. And there are tools that can help. And I think the research area that should be focused on that. But that's for another story. I'm sorry, because I thought I was in the big one, in the, with the big screen. So I, I, you need to trust me here. Um, basically, I just wanted to show you an example. So I envision in five in three years' time having this kind of uh, annual report. This is an annual report already, actually. It's not in line, but it's an annual report, PDF. Okay, for the red roller. And... We have been playing with uh, uh, generative AI technologies. I will let you know how later on we are working with this to uh, have a clear understanding how to deal with this kind of reports. Okay, I want you to see these generative AI technologies are very cool, can be very generic, but it, it is a lot of room of work on trying to customize these technologies for specific purposes. Okay, and things like this, we, this is what we try to do here. You know, I have a 10 months uh, baby. I don't have time for nothing at all. <laughs> so when I started reading this kind of uh, reports, which is interested till page 10, then I don't have the time. <laughs> Honestly, I say to my team, let's try to use generative AI with this particular report to see the, how this can help me to actually get the info I really want and the information that I can find interested. At the end of the day, to have a clear view on the behavior of the company in this uh, ESG part, okay? Because only that, it was like 150 pages, which again, I don't have time. So. Uh, I give this to my team. We build this kind of generative AI specifically for this kind of report. And they put me like four simple buttons. I say, hey, Maria, you know that you can take a paragraph, click a button, 
and put me this in a table, I say, okay, this is fantastic. Because I put a paragraph in a table, I put this table in a Excel, I can do my things. Fantastic. Okay, this is very interesting. Okay, simple, but very interesting. Another thing, uh, summarize, they give me a button, they allow me to summarize sections, and I see in 10 minutes, in 10 minutes, 30 sections. Summarize. Okay, that's fantastic. I was as well. You know, I was capable to read 300 pages in five minutes. Fantastic. In that way, I can think in another, in another baby. Maybe in the future. <laughs> Again, this is a tool that we are playing with, okay? Just remember that. Copilot Assistant, I wanted to put a fancy name. Basically, um, here you need to be very expert in the domain to understand something. sometimes what they are saying because the acronyms they use, because they w the way they talk about materiality, the way they talk about the specific topics in energy that if you are not expert, it's quite complicated to really understand what's going on, what the strategy they're going to follow, at least for people like me, which I'm a computer engineer, that I try to really fit in this world since many years. And, you know, I try to learn as much as I can. So they give me another, uh, I have a fantastic thing, I have to tell you, eh? uh, another button that tells you, hey, make this clear for a normal person like me. And, well, I'm sorry, you cannot see but it gives you basically an explanation for certain terms. It tries to clarify in a simple manner paragraphs that are written for very specialized people. Three simple examples that I show you with a tool. We have basically to play that basically the idea I wanted to show you is how easy I can ana analyze information like this that is pure narrative that has a lot of values, like the key audit matters, but I so content consuming to get there to analyze uh, and so on. Simple tools like this one with very novel technologies like generative AI, I saw the value. I don't want to influence you as a friend, but for me, it was a fantastic friend. Okay, uh, mostly because I now for me, the time is so precious. Okay. A new idea, it come to my mind. Auto-tagging. Auto-tagging. Okay, what's that? Okay, I was, before I was showing you as a user of the data. I'm analyzing the data. But look, I'm going to be a preparer of these new reports that are asking more data that I never thought in my life. Okay, and also in XBRL, and I need to put the tag. Okay, what if we use this kind of technologies to help preparers to identify and maps tax? They somehow have done a lot of work on this regard, preparing data on ESG, nevertheless using other frameworks, right? And now they need to do certain work of analysis to translate what they have in the new standards and complement and change a bit. I'm not telling you this is going to do the whole work, but I honestly think that this kind of technologies is helping or can help undo what I'm show, trying to show here. How a part of this text is equal to some tax that my friend Richard is asking me now with <laughs> ESRS or ISSB. And I think also this kind of tools can be very helpful in the process that we are right now trying to align both standards at the same time. Why not? Why not? With real reports. You got me? Okay. It's another vision. But I think these kind of technologies that we are playing with, with my super team that is saving me time, really, we are going to that kind of approach. And as fast, as much as we are testing, it's getting very ready for that. Okay, we are still learning, it's, it's true, but we are now touching things like this. So it's closer than what you think, and it's possible. Okay, 
three years ago, I didn't tell you this. Now, I'm more secure about this any more than before. The nice thing I have with my team is the rest of the team don't understand nothing about reporting. <laughs> but they don't understand a lot of about generative AI. So when we combine both worlds, I can see really the potential opportunities here. Okay, Simple needs that we have, like this one, saving my time reading reports, with that kind of technology is very straightforward going, going there. Okay. Okay, I have to say auto-tagging. Auto-tagging, fantastic. Um, this diagram I show you here, for an audience that is uh, familiar with generative AI, for them this is something easy to understand. For us, maybe much more complicated. What we try to describe here are like what is at the back of, gen of this chat GPT or generative AI technologies, okay? At the end of the day is information that is important and relevant and you incorporate into the machine, let's say in that way, plus the prompts, the queries that you do, okay? In that way, I'm going to explain this in a very simple manner. Eh? You do the magic behind. I mean, there is a lot of work there. But, you know, as People from XBRL, there is an area that we need to combine. And if we combine, we can expand the use case that I showed you before. And let me explain this. If you see the diagram, what I want you to focus is XBRL has a very important role to play to have that relevant info ready and well described. Okay? So far, the taxonomies we have in the market are fantastic, but for this kind of technology, we can do much more. And let me put a call for the expert community here. So we describe data. We describe the type of data. We describe things like uh, validations. But for this kind of technologies, we need to also describe things like for this specific data point, what is the information you, I expected you to complete? which is normally something that we don't include in the taxonomies. We have a place, we have reference, but we don't describe what is the expectations of the... Of, if I have an attack that is called scope one emissions, if you don't want to understand what you need to disclose, you need to go to the guidelines, right? What if we incorporate in the taxonomy that description that comes to the guidelines? This is something that will be help, very helpful to expand the use of generative AI. Is it clear? So here, because I think this is the form of XBRL, I want to make really a call to think on this part, change or evolve the practices we have, describing and building taxonomies, including much more information to extend application of these two technologies that are coming to help to, to have more in the market things like I showed you before. Because I think it's possible, but for us still we need a lot of work to do in order to some of the part make that happen. Which is not impossible. Not at all. We are doing this. But it's time very time consuming. Okay. So I think here um, this kind of technologies can push our standard to evolve. And you don't need to create a new specification if I'm, if I'm honest with you. You just need to check, evolve the way we, we develop taxonomies, like including much more info that we didn't consider before relevant for. But at the end of the day, we need to think that at the moment we build taxonomies is also to help in the use of it, the information, right? And again, I know in terms of sustainability, this is going to be a, a lot of massive information, but very narrative itself. So I think, again, a lot of needs will come to have good tools to be capable to analyze the info. But I think from the, from the XBRL community, we need to make the effort now that, you know, ESRL, ISSB is going to XBRL to make that happen. 
Okay, it will be an extra effort, but I think it's an interesting area to, to explore and to, to put move forward. If you want to see what I showed you before, which I love it because again, I don't have a time. So I know this late, this is siesta time in Spain. So I try to make it sure. <laughs> I'm very direct. So go home message. This is basically the four points. I want you to go home after my presentation, no more, not five, not six. Again, keep it simple, uh, less is more sometimes. So what I want you is to think that sustainability reporting is coming, it's here. You have better people than me explaining to do this yesterday. Uh, as far as I can see, it will still be very narrative, not a problem, but we need to address reality here. Uh, I think this is part of the cost-benefit analysis. We need to see, again, how we can handle this. But generative AI, I think, is quite a friendly a friend technology here uh, to help on those things like very advanced analytics, uh, help you to analyze the information in a very simple button, clear ideas, summaries, these go to a table, things like this, fantastic. Uh, as preparers, auto-tagging. I think that will help in the first years, potentially, a lot, okay? Uh, but for that, for the expert community, I do hear a call. We need to think on this kind of practices to improve the current taxonomy development practice to, to make possible and for everyone uh, examples as I showed you before that actually we are working on. I'm passing my, our time in a fun way, honestly speaking. Um, but uh, I think this is a very good momentum for that. It's just we need to join and merge both worlds together. And I think this is also a very good opportunity for, for the XBR community to start be have its the, the, their footprint in very novel technologies and very interesting uh, areas. And I think sustainability in the coming years will need this much more and more. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you. Just before you go, okay. uh, <laughs> just uh, checking if there's any questions. Thomas. I understood um, to, to improve generative uh, AI, it's important to um, write the guidance for taxonomies in a different way. So considering how current guidance documents are written, could you provide some examples what you would improve? So I think in terms of uh, taxonomy development, but I think there are two things. The guidelines are still uh, from the guidance to the taxonomy. There is a work to do in terms of normalization of information. As you can see, the guideline to translate into tables in taxonomy is a work that I know, Richard, you are putting your mind. <laughs> totally. Um, and there is a second work I think we need to do. In the taxonomy, we need to include some descriptions on what is expected of that data point, which I don't think it has been normal practice in any taxonomy so far. Uh, like, you know, scope one emissions, the guideline said this is the description, this is the methodology, this is all. What if you include this? as part of the taxonomy. That will help then generative AI algorithms to read, understand what is expected in each data point and then make things like auto-tagging. So uh, just summarizing a little bit, I think that comes to a better, better, better description of data points in the taxonomy, it will help massively. It'd be sufficient that these guidelines will be referenced to the taxonomy tags and that's it. You don't have to put it in the taxonomy. If you can reference in a way that then it, we can easily extract, yes. But then sometimes that's the origin of the problem. I'll go for just, just a fun one. Uh, okay. You mentioned how you don't have a, a lot of time, but have you considered that you may have a lot of time in the future because you sound like you're working to put yourself out of a job a bit? If auto-tagging <laughs> was real, which I'm highly skeptical of, but if it was real, then there would in fact be no need to tag, right? Because the whole point of tagging is to make the document machine readable. But if the 
machine can tag it, then it's already machine readable. So, uh, I, again, consider of course, I don't expect you to say, yes, I'm working to put myself out of a job. I just thought that would be a fun little thing to end the. <laughs> no, I think this is our first approach, and I think this kind of uh, technologies will, I, th I think, will help and reduce time on doing that 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 work. Like I think it, that's the role that they are playing. It's not replacing at all, and you cannot delegate full. But I think from nothing to something that it gives to you is a big achievement really and instead of just going in a position that going doing everything from scratch i, I think it's an incremental sort of idea yeah i right? know i know i was just having a little bit i know <laughs> but I, I i think it's a virtuous sort of cycle because you there's clearly some things you can auto tag uh but the tagger or the preparer whoever you want to put in the how you want to name them they have a role to play in that continuously totally. and as the data improves the expectations increase and it just continues to the bar just continues to go up right so there's an opportunity to make the process more efficient um but it doesn't go away sadly let's say you were able to get it 95 percent accurate would, would you so voice recognition is not good enough at 95 percent Right. Right. I mean, but the point is, when you, we say 95 percent, we think that's really good. Yet 95 percent has never been good enough just for a simple application like voice recognition. Maybe it's not simple. So I'm not I don't know what the right percent is, but my belief and it's a belief is that as the bar is raised, the expectations go up as well. So there's an expectation for more information, higher quality information. Everybody always wants more. Nobody is ever satisfied. So this is not a problem that worries me. It, it's, it's an opportunity to be better. I'm just having fun. <laughs>